We are the Sound Choice team. There are four of us on this project from very different backgrounds. So first I'll introduce you to the problem context. There are many things in our environment that give us information through sound. But what if you couldn't hear any of these things? This is what it's like for people who are deaf. Sound gives us information about location, about context, and about action that needs to be taken. There are 320 million people worldwide who suffer from hearing impairments, and one in 20 need help. We found that often a person who is deaf uses many different devices to get information from their environment, and what we also found is most of these are not integrated, and the few that are are very limited in the number and type of devices that can be integrated. We found three major opportunities in this space, and our focus is on the overlap between integration and context to provide contextual information in one integrated system. We followed an iterative design process in our project, starting with the research phase. So in this phase, our goal was to understand the space. So we conducted secondary research first to understand about hearing impairments, about deaf culture, or some of the existing solutions that Anna showed. We also conducted a couple of expert interviews. So from AJ Brush, we learned about uh, conducting user research in this space, and um, also about developing our app. And Rob Roth is a program coordinator at UW who's very active in the space. Um, he's also hearing impaired, and from him we learned about the challenges uh, that he faces every day. After this, we moved on to our primary research uh, where field studies were our main method. So just summarizing some of the findings from our study. So the first thing was people are really scared that they might miss out on emergency cues. So like this quote shows there is a fear for themselves and for their family members that they may miss out on alarms like a fire alarm. Now that was a critical sound. We also had some findings about everyday sounds. So this quote is from a participant who slept through a faucet that was running all through the night. He woke up in the morning to find the floor covered with water. We heard the same story from another participant too. Um, another finding was uh, people find difficulties in responding to visitors. So this quote is from a family member who got locked out of his apartment. He kept knocking on the door, he kept calling uh, his partner and didn't get a response. And actually when we went on this field study, we had a similar uh, experience too. And we also found that the situation gets more complicated if your visitors are also hearing impaired. Um, another finding is people are tethered to their kitchens when they are cooking. So if we think about our kitchen, there are a lot of devices that tell our status with sound. Um, and for these people, it's important to just stay in the kitchen and monitor their devices, otherwise they don't know that something is um, done. So for example, like this quote says, um, he has to monitor what is going on to what, like the oven timer going off. So uh, we took all our findings from research and consolidated it to move to design. So first, what sounds are most important? So there's a hierarchy here. Most important are safety and security related sounds like the fire alarm. Next in importance are everyday events. These are not super critical, but they do help lead an independent life. Um, we also found a third category that we didn't focus much on, but that involves communication within family members in the home. So we also want, uh, so the next step of our research is what kind of app would we build? Is it a mobile app? Is it a wearable? Is it an environmental display? So to find out about this, we actually did a card sort card match exercise where we had a lot of sounds in cards and we asked users to match sounds to specific cards. So um, the cards had different uh, form factors like a mobile app or a wall display. In every case, we found a wearable was the preferred choice. Why? Uh, because the wearable can be worn all the time. It's mobile, it's discreet, so a person will not, uh, just looking at the wearable, a person is not gonna know that it's an assistive device. 
We also asked our users what other modality would be preferred. So how do we translate the sounds to a different modality? And we found that vibrations are great for a first pass alert, and then the next pass alert is through text alerts. So a simple text method saying the faucet is running gives context information, and that was preferred. So putting all that together, our design concept is a wearable watch, um, and these are some of our design principles. So how does our system work? So we have a network of sensors uh, that detects everyday events in the home. Um, the output from these sensors is integrated and processed by uh, the Home OS app from Microsoft. On the Home OS is a platform that uh, allows users to control a number of devices in their home. Um, and it also provides real-time updates about um, events in the home. On the output side, we are alerting users through a smartwatch. That is our primary platform. We also have a mobile app that gives um, information about history um, and uh, remote access to users. So now I'm going to walk you through our design process. We had five stages to our design process. First being defining the interaction model, which is our end-to-end -end user flow. We created an alert metrics. Iteratively, we created our UI. And for prototype, we, uh, we created high and low fidelity prototype, which we tested with our users using participatory design. And that defined our final spec for the design. So I'll walk you through our alert metrics. Uh, using our primary and secondary research, we divided sounds in home in four, uh, five important categories. First being frequent and non-critical. For example, visitor at the door. Apply sound indicators like oven timer on or off. Sounds which are non-critical, but can get critical if not addressed in a timely manner, which Yamini mentioned, like a running faucet. And last but not the least, emergency sounds which are infrequent, but can happen, like a bugler or a fire alert. Since this shows the breadth and depth of our research and user evaluation, I would like to walk you through one of our core scenarios. And also, when you look at this, we've accounted not just for sounds, but also things like false alert, if what happens if the pet turns the door on, and what time is the day, and what is the context in which the user is in. So here, in this scenario, you're looking at visitor at the door. So there could be only three kinds of visitor. Either it's your family member, it could be an expected guest, or it could be an unexpected guest. So these three vertical columns represent end-to-end -end flow for those scenarios. So in case of a family member, we understand it could be annoying when you get multiple alerts, so it's up to the user whether they want to see the alert or not. In case of an expected guest, we understand your wearable is synced in with your calendar, and you might have received a pre-alert reminding you of a visitor. In that case, you get a soft alert telling you that, hey, you have a visitor at the door. But in case of an expected guest, we understand user needs a stronger alert so that he can react to the situation quickly. In that case, he gets a stronger vibration. And in either of the scenario, when unacknowledged, we have a system where the primary contact can be notified if user wants that mechanism. So now, this is our alert metrics. We wanted our alert metrics to be intuitive and highly empathetic, just like our smartphones today. We can easily differentiate between a calling sound, a text vibrate, and a notification that comes through our smart, uh, social media. We wanted to replicate that similar interaction, and here is a mapped out flow that shows how we've used uh, multiple tactile clues, including with visual clues, to create that system where user can intuitively tell whether it's a critical alert or a non-critical alert. And based, uh, based on what we found, as a uh, the alert metrics and interaction model were the foundation for creating our prototypes. So we created three prototypes, paper prototype, model prototype, and high fidelity electronic prototype. And when we tested with users, we had some great insights. Users really liked the personalized, friendly way, uh, and a simple, clean UI. And with tactile skew, we learned a lot about user preference to vibration, which we incorporated in our functional prototype. And yay, four out of four users said they would buy our watch, <laughs> including our expert user. So that was gratifying. And now I'll walk you through our concept. So this is the visual representation of our alert metrics and interaction model. If you see, intuitively we've created a unique iconography, as well as a color palette can tell you the nature of alert. And now I'll walk you through a scenario 
which is a frequent emergency sound, which is in case of a fire. We understand when it's fire, you can't set a message on your watch. So that's why it's preset and configured before time. So in case of an emergency, it can be easily sent using one click confirmation. And now we'd like to thank a few people. We'd like to give a very special thank you to AJ Brush from Microsoft Research. She was our industry sponsor for this project and really helped us learn about how to do research. We'd also like to thank our instructors and also a very special thank you to Albert Louis. an interesting idea. Only concern we had was it wasn't mobile and a lot of our users have problem because they can't see the sound as well as can't hear the sound is when the problems usually in most situations occur. We actually have thought about that. Um, that's actually what, where we started with our project and we realized while we were doing more research that even though a lot of information is conveyed through sound, it doesn't have to be conveyed through sound. So we realized there were different channels we could take that. Um, actually, one of our participants told us that he is hyper-visual now, yeah. and they're all faster readers um, now. Yeah. Um, we also found when we were testing our vibrations uh, that some of our vibrations were, um, some of our vibrations felt very strong on us, but when we went for the user evaluations, we didn't get that feedback. Um, they told us the vibrations were just fine. 